Welcome to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. I am your writer-in-chief, Rosalind Jackson. I am a lover of words, and that love led me to a passion for writing. And what's the next best thing to writing? Talking about writing. So kick back and join me for mind-blowing chats about writing, covering everything from screenplays to novels to poetry, from nonfiction books to songwriting, and much more. Cornell Thomas is the perfect example of turning a loss into a win. Two weeks away from playing professional basketball in Europe, Cornell suffered a career-ending injury that derailed his dream. Growing up with adversity his whole life allowed Cornell to get past why me and focus on what now. Cornell now shares his story all over the world. He's a multi-book author and expert in positive self-awareness. Cornell has been endorsed by some of the top experts in his field, including Tony Robbins and Dr. Cornell West. Welcome to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast, Mr. Cornell Thomas. Thank you so much. This is an <laughs> honor for me to be here. <laughs> I really appreciate you doing this. So I just read your bio, but mm -hmm. your bio is very humble. So I need you to tell the people who Cornell Thomas is. Ooh, okay. Well, thank you, first off. <laughs> and I am a husband, father, speaker, author, uh, social, social entrepreneur, and I'm currently creating a, a TV show about purpose called On Purpose, where I travel all over the world and interview uh, ordinary humans who are doing extraordinary things for humanity. So I do a lot of things. On top of that, I, I train kids for basketball. I'm a youth trainer. I was a former basketball coach, former basketball player. So I do a bunch. I have a, I have a lot of different hats that I wear. Uh, but the most important for me is just giving back and helping people as much as I can. And that sounds great. Now, you are big on positivity. Yeah. And in fact, you've written three books on the subject. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your books. Uh, well, my first book was called The Power of Positivity, Controlling Where the Ball Bounces. And that was just sharing with people my story. I think a lot of people, I'm, I was very introverted before I started writing about what I've been through growing up and feelings and emotions. And so when I started writing, it was funny. My wife was like, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> no. mm. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is just, it was just my way of letting things out. So that was more about me. My second book was called The Power of Me, Army of One. That was more about the reader. It was developing the mindset needed to be successful in life. And the third book, Extraordinary, The Distance Between Good and Great, it was a combination of both. Uh, it was a little bit of my story, but it was also about you know, what we can do uh, to be great at things and understanding that we're not that far away. For I, my, my theory is life is just all mindset. And the stronger your mind is, the better your life will be. Mm, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> And so you're you're you have a big presence on social media. Mm. Um, your positivity is reflected in your on your social media platform. So with the current state of social media, as it is, you know it's it's known for being negative and people are haters and mm. and got scammers all over the place. Sure. How do you maintain a message of positivity in that space? Yeah. Well, I look at social media two ways. So there's the version you just said, right? Like, so right. if you really sit and look at people's timelines and it's divisive and it's angry and people are just combating one another, but then you look at it the other side and you have people like yourself and Tracy Emmons and me and people that are just posting positive messages. So I sift through the garbage and then I find that treasure. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't pay attention. Uh, I don't go down the, the negative rabbit hole of social media, which you can easily do. You post something, someone's like you and you're like, what? Someone said what? <laughs> this, what? what? They said, this? OK. And then next thing you know, you're just going at it on social media and wasting time out of your life. <laughs> so uh, I just concentrate on the, on the more positive post and and uh, positive information. That is so true. You you can get in that trap. Sometimes I have to watch myself because I, I, can, I can get there and I'm like, okay, uh, let me stop. Yeah. It, is, it is not just you getting there, though, Ron. It's people taking you there, right? Right, right. There, there are people that you, you've known for a long time in your life 
And you just never knew that they had maybe had this opinion or felt this sort of way. Right. And they kind of get you in your feelings where you're like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, this is what you thought. <laughs> and then you're going back and forth. So I, it's not like I don't see the negative to the negativity. I always tell people I'm not like all rainbows and butterflies. Like when I go out <laughs> and speak, I tell people straight up, like life is going to punch you in the mouth. It's just how you respond to it. So, you know, I, I don't, it's not all, you know, uh, you know, just, oh my gosh, everything's, I know there's negativity out in the world. I, it's just, you. it's what you choose to focus on. Correct. Correct. That's so true. And uh, speaking of rainbows and butterflies, some people <laughs> don't believe in the message of positivity. Mm-hmm. They think it's all about, you know, rainbows and puppies and it doesn't really <laughs> help. It doesn't really help anybody. So how can a skeptic like that receive and implement your message of positivity? Well, that's this is such a great point and such a fantastic question. <laughs> they can't. Hmm. They can't because unless you're open to it, you'll never see it. And the analogy I love to use is it's when you decide to buy a new car. You've never seen that car anywhere until you think about that new car. So as you're thinking about the process of buying that new car, when you get that new car, then you start to see it everywhere. But that new car has been there the whole entire time. Your eyes were just not open to it. Your mind was just not open to it. Mm -hmm. So if someone is extremely negative and their mind is not open to the possibility of thinking different, guess what? I don't care who you are. You're not going to change the way they think. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that there are some people that are stuck in their ways. There's some people that are going to be that way. And until they decide that I want to change, they're not going to change. And I tried to save everybody from this negative, you know, cloud Mm -hmm. that follows some of these people around. And then I realized, Cornell, if you talk to a brick wall long enough, you're the one that looks foolish. (laughs) So you have to, you just let people be them. Let them like, you you know, people say, hey, go do you. You got to let people do them. Right. And and when they come around to it, I'll be there for them. But until then, I'm not going to sit there and waste and a, a crazy amount of time trying to convince them of something that is common sense. Right, right. We we got to do something about them because they're <laughs> they're, yeah. they're taking this world in a crazy direction. <laughs> they are, and, and you know what? It's it's funny that you said that because you get what you attract, right? So True. there are people that are super negative that for whatever reason, it's like they attract a following of people just like them. Right. But there are people like us that are positive and we attract the following too. I mean, you're from Los Angeles, right? Yes. I'm from New Jersey, but yet I've seen you three times, four times already. And we, we talk on the phone and we message back and forth. How does that happen? It happens mm-hmm. because there's a higher power involved that's connecting our, us positive people as well. So I always look at the yin and yang of things, right? There's a reason that you know, there's negative people, et cetera. But man, look how many people, how many positive people are starting to connect now through social media. Also. Right. Right. That's very true. I do believe in, in the, um, I believe in energies and frequencies and they do mm-hmm. attract, you know, on the same level. Sure. hundred <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. That's right. And so now, as I said, you've written three books. Mm-hmm. And um, when did you know you wanted to be a writer? Oof. <laughs> uh, let's see. When did I know I wanted to be a writer? I would say, so my first book came out in 2013, right? Mm-hmm. And before that, I started getting into this space because I was sick of seeing all the negativity on social media. So I started making my own quotes. And then the quotes turned into blogs. And then I would say it's, it was six months into my blogs where I said, you know what? I can I can write a book. Like I can really write a book. Like I don't mm-hmm. know how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have to probably ask Google about it. But I'm, I can figure <laughs> this out. <laughs> and Not Google. Then I, <laughs> Google had the answer. Google's like go to Create Space. <laughs> and I started and I just started writing. And I said uh, what, I started to see that our words have so much power. So why not write a book? Why? Because mm-hmm. books don't have a shelf life. People don't really throw books away. Right. So if I write this book. And it ends up on someone's, you know, coffee table. Even if they don't read it, someone might walk past and see this crazy dude standing on two basketballs with two basketballs on his hand and say, what's he about? Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll pick it up. So that's what made me write is just the fact that I saw how powerful our words are and the impact that they can make on other people. Okay. 
And what other kind of writing do you do? Uh, man, I, uh, every once in a while you'll see I post a poem on uh, Facebook or, or Instagram. So sometimes I'll write uh, poetry. It's okay. very, very rare. But when I'm when I'm really moved, especially when there's a social injustice or I just see the, the poetry side come out mm-hmm. and I'll write a poem. Um, and uh, that's that's it. I, I kind of write. Uh, I'll write blogs still every once in a while. I'll do guest blogs for people. Uh, I do a lot of writing just for myself, and that's just ideas and execution, things that I want to happen, and then what they look like. So mm-hmm. I do that as well. So that's 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 the only really writing I do. I do a lot of speaking. Okay. Yeah, I would love to read some of your poetry. Oh, okay. I would love I would love to get your eyes on it and see what you think. Because <laughs> I'm a poet also. So. Oh, now, now you put some pressure on me. Now, you, now you're putting the pressure. Now I'm not sure if I want you to read it. Now I want you to. <laughs> the fact that you're, uh, I, I got to understand that when you have the word wordy giant, like, you know, that should have told, should have told me all I needed to know. Right. But okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so what is your writing process when you have an idea mm-hmm. in your head that you want to write? Like, what is your writing process? It's funny. So there are different types of writers. There are people that, you know, they sit themselves in front of the computer and they don't get up until they write a certain amount of words, certain amount of pages. I do not do that. I write when I'm inspired. That's it. I write when I'm inspired. When I feel it, I write. When I don't feel it, I get myself up and I start to move Mm -hmm. because nothing happens from stagnation. So sitting in front of a computer and looking at the cursor does nothing for me. It just gets me frustrated. So why would I write in frustration? Mm -hmm. So there'll be times where I'm on the plane. Uh, Yesterday, you know, I was was eating. I went out and got something to eat and I had my computer. It was just me by myself. And I'm just sitting there and I just was listening to music. And I was like, all right, I'm going to start writing a little bit. And so I started writing, you know, parts of my fifth book. And I'm like... Okay, yeah, this is flowing. And then as soon as it stopped, I stopped. <laughs> I mm. closed my computer, and I saw I'll go back to it later. Okay. That sounds like a great process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wouldn't work for me because I, yeah. I, I have to stay on, on top of myself because yeah. procrastination is my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm fighting against that every day. Yeah, the struggle is real. The struggle, <laughs> the, but the struggle is real as writers because... It's such a personal thing, and yes. it, it's coming from a heart space. So, you know, we're our biggest criti- uh, critics. So we'll look at writing. Like I used to throw poems away, and my oh. mom says, "Stop throwing poems away," because just because you don't like it, someone else might love it. Right. When I was, and, and I said, "Okay, mom, that makes a lot of sense." And I started, you know, just keeping my poems. But we're our biggest critics. We're like, ah, this isn't good. That's when true. It could, it could change someone else's life. That's very true. Now, who are some of your favorite writers? Ooh, my favorite writers. So, my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, poets are Langston Hughes, mm-hmm. uh, Maya Angelou. Um, I love uh, Paul Dunbar. Mm. Uh, they're my favorite author. By I, I would say, probably by far, is Malcolm Gladwell. Okay, that's my favorite author, and the reason he's my favorite author is because. He makes the normal seem interesting. His mind works very different. It's oh, wow. it's it's. I've read every single book that he's ever put out, and I listen. I've listened to every podcast because the way he thinks about things, like things that everyday things that don't matter but mm-hmm. matter. You know, like if, if mm-hmm. you think about it, they matter. So I like people that challenge me, like mentally. He's one of my favorites, and um, but there's, I mean, I've. I read so many, like, I've read so many different types of books. Like, my books are all over the place. You know, like I've, you know, you read Malcolm X from with Alex, Alex Haley's version of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And then I'd read, like, How to Be Interesting by this lady, Jessica Hagee. Okay. You know, then I'll read a Malcolm Gladwell book. Then I'll read, you know, um, a, a book on nonconformists. Then I'll read about it. So my, my stuff is all over the place. <laughs> uh, I, just liked, I just like to read about interesting people. Okay. And I noticed on your book, um, The Power of Positivity, that Tony Robbins gave you a blurb shout out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is so amazing. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. how did that come about? Uh, that was a year in the process. So I, when I first started writing quotes, I used to send a quote to Tony Rob- to Tony every single day. Like oh, every wow. day I'd send, I mean, do my own personal quote, but I'd send him a quote. And after like four or five months, he started, you know, retweeting the quote. And uh, there, was a, there was a woman who I sent a book to from Vietnam uh, in 2013. 
And two years later, she asked me if I'd be interested in going to a Tony Robbins event. And she, if her and her husband paid for it. And wow. I was like blown away, like what? And she's like, yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I, I just tweeted something out, you know, looking forward to going to, cause I wanted to go there to see who, how he was as a speaker. Mm-hmm. Like, to be honest, that was my only objective. I didn't care about anything else. <laughs> um, and I got that much more, you know, more when I got there, but I went there to see if this dude is real. And I mm-hmm. went there, I was like, okay, this cat is the real deal. Like he's, He's legit. And afterwards, I wrote him. I said, listen, I had a great time, you know, at your, uh, and, I, and I talked to him while I was there. He asked a question. I raised my hand, and we had, a, like, a 10-minute conversation. Wow. And I said, I, I said, I, you know, got to see, got to, <clears throat> excuse me, got to see that you were a real human. Um, I'd love for you to write the forward to my book. He, he wrote me back right away, contact my executive assistant. He was signed with Simon the Schuster, so he couldn't write the forward, but he's like, I could write you, you know, a testimonial. Mm-hmm. And I said, I love it. So I'm like, okay, think here. Now, he can write a testimony of the book, or he can write something about you. What would you rather? I said, I'd rather have something about me, because that's something that you can use for every book for the rest of your life. Right. Um, so he wrote this great, man, just two great little paragraphs about me and the book, which was um, I was super humble and grateful for. And, uh, and that's how it came about. So it took a year to get all that. Oh, um, wow. But I was relentless. My book was done seven months before mm-hmm. <laughs> I got the testimonial, but I said, I'm not going to get anybody's testimony until, you know, I get, uh, Tony's and he did. Like, I mean, I have plenty of people that I could, they could have gave me a great, <clears throat> great testimonial that have been amazing. But I was like, for this book, because it's called extraordinary, I want, I want Tony's, uh, uh, testimony endorsement on it. Oh, wow. That is so amazing. That, that's amazing that he responded to you and got back yeah. to you like that. He's a good, he's a good dude. And, and when people help you, and there's nothing you can really do to help them. Those are people that are amazing people, right? Exactly. Like there's some people on this planet, they have everything. They have, all, you know, they have mansions and they have this and they have that. You can't help them. Right. And when they reach their hand out to help you and, you know, Tracy's a great example. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Tracy Edmonds is, you know, because when I first messaged her years ago, we just had a rapport back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I look at people, I look at everybody as equal. I don't look at anybody above me, no one below me. So, and I didn't want anything. I just was like, this just seems like an amazing human being. And then next thing you know, we're meeting at Universal Studios and talking face-to-face. Then I'm Mm -hmm. at her house and we're talking. I get a chance to meet you. And Mm -hmm. she's just a great human being. She is. That is, she's she's just real. She's all about (laughs) making connections with good people. And that's how I am. So it, it really, if you... It, the biggest thing is the ask, right? You don't be afraid to ask another human for something if right. you're doing good work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Period. I'm not afraid. Humans don't frighten me. My mom does. That's the only thing <laughs> that frightens me. Everybody else is whatever. <laughs> so now you are stepping into the TV and film world as a mm-hmm. producer. What mm-hmm. kind of projects are you producing right now? My pro- one and only project right now is my TV show. It's called On Purpose. And uh, it's, man, it's just something that I felt. It's the same thing with writing. I just felt like it was needed. I felt this was a time where I look at things that are on TV and I'm just not excited about it. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, if it's, not, if it's not fiction, then it's not really good. And there's nothing positive coming out of it. All of it's divisive or it's, you know, scandalous stuff or you know, real housewives of this is just garbage to me. <laughs> so I'm like, my mom always told me, if you don't like something, change it. I don't like what I see on TV. So I'm going to change it. So we're going to, um, work on this TV show right now. We're in the funding stage, trying to just find people to invest in it. And I'm going to shoot, you know, we're going to shoot it ourselves. We'll sh- shoot the first two episodes and then pitch those first two episodes and then come back out to LA and pitch the first two episodes to networks and uh, see who picks it up. And if, for whatever reason people aren't feeling it then we'll just make it ourselves we'll make our own channel and we'll do it ourselves so i just don't let anything stop me from doing what i want to do yes that that's important to that's important important mindset to have yeah (laughs) because you don't want anybody blocking what you want to do (laughs) no not at all we we provide our own limitations and we do that often right so i'm gonna make sure not that doesn't happen when it comes to tv show and when the tv show you know, it takes it takes off and it comes to fruition. When we have our um, opening night, you know you're going to be right there in the front row. Ah, yes, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have my girl Roz there. <laughs> so what what is the what will sh- the show be about? Is okay. there anything you can discuss right now? Oh, yeah. yeah, I can discuss it for sure. So 
I'm just going to, you know, travel all over. And there's a bunch of people that are doing really good things in the micro for humanity that people just don't know about. They don't know about these people. They're almost like hidden, right? Because they're doing their thing all different parts of the world and like kind of in a small scale. So my whole premise for the show is bringing their idea, like all their ideas and their stories to life and having the world see who they are and what they're doing to bring like positive programming uh, to television. Oh wow, that sounds yeah. amazing! Yes, so we're we've already uh, like the trailer shot. I'm the I'm the pilot episode, and then <clears throat> I have a lady by the name of Jennifer Shum DePaul. She's has a, a a company called Project Kind, a nonprofit called Project Kind, and she does amazing things for the homeless. She's our first episode, so we're we're ready. We're just as soon as the, that funding comes in, we're gonna be off and running. Oh, that's amazing! I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> now, um, what is what's your overall goal with TV and film? Are you looking mm-hmm. to create a production company at some point, or what's what's your goal in that area? You know, it's funny. I have not really thought past the TV show. I, I it would be great to uh, start a production company and give people, especially you know, people of color that are out there, you know, just that need the help. Right, that are like, hey, you know what? I want to do this. I have this idea. I'm creative. Give them a platform yes. to produce things. I mean, it's it's no hidden secret that you know it's, it's a tough world to crack mm-hmm. <laughs> for uh, brown skin folks mm-hmm. uh, in in this in in LA. Uh, so to be able to do that, um, I also want to use that platform to you know maybe start my own channel, okay. right? Like have our own you know channel where it's it's just you know positive. You know, programming positive news and things that are uh, uniting the planet instead of dividing the planet. Definitely. Okay. Well, we'll have to. I'll have to have you back on once you get that up and running, so we can discuss that. You'll be too big by then. I'll be like, "Hey, Ross, take it on the show." You're like, you know what, Cornell? I would love to have you on the show, but Tony's coming on, and this was coming on, and right. You know, I'll just, I'll just cherish these moments until you get too big for me. <laughs> oh, never that, never that. <laughs> so tell the people where they can find you online. Sure. So my website is uh, cornell-thomas.com. Uh, on Instagram, it's just Cornell Thomas 34. Facebook, Cornell Thomas, and Twitter at Cornell Thomas. And I am I try to respond back as soon as possible. So if you hit me up, I'll hit you right back. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you're a busy man. You got to get to other places <laughs> yeah, while you're out you here in L.A. <laughs> you got a hob and knob in L.A. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, Roz, like the grind. Like I'm here. I had yesterday I had nine meetings. Oh, nine? I started at 5 a.m. My goodness. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> Who, uh, yeah, who's I'm up on, in L.A. I'm on at 5 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But yeah, this is an honor. Thank you so much for, you're for welcome. having me here. You're welcome. All right. (laughs) Thanks for taking the time to tune in to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. Don't forget to check out my blog at www.wordygirlent.com. That's W-O-R-D-Y-G-I-R-L-E-N-T.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at at WordyGirlENT and on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash wordy girl ENT and always remember it all begins with a single word so what are you waiting for go write